So as the title says, this is obviously going to be about uh, swearing and language and profanity. Um, I did get some notes because I realized the importance of having a structure to these videos versus just speaking directly from my mind, completely lack of organization. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about my personal belief on profanity, why I hold it uh, at this age, and why. So in the future, if I'm ever questioning it, hopefully this helps you out. So um, when I was 19 or 20, I was having lunch with a friend of mine and she uh, she was basically, she brought up the topic of cursing or something. We got into it somehow. And I said, oh yeah, I would never do that. I, that's bad. And she's like, why? And I cannot stress to you actually the importance of asking why. Um, I feel like you need to do that more. That's a very nice skill to have is to ask why. Um, but nonetheless, she asked me why, and I was like, well, pff, obviously, because it's bad, because that's what I've been told growing up from age zero to, like, 20 at that point. And um, I really didn't have a good answer for her, basically, is what I'm getting to. And it got me thinking, um, yeah, why do I curse? Uh, or why don't I curse? And being the naive little 19, 20-year-old, that I was, I didn't do any research and I was trying to come into my own and get away from my my uh, parents' ideals and so I started cursing. Like, And I know that that is not healthy and not, not good to just throw your morals to the wind because somebody around you says, um, or questions maybe your belief, not says to do it. But uh, that's what I did and so Looking, looking back on it and experiencing that and going through that uh, time in my life where I was cursing, I didn't, I didn't necessarily love it. Like, yeah, it made me feel good in the moment, but I look back and I'm like, dang it, why did I do that? And so obviously since then I've, I've grown up a little bit, I've made the decision to really kind of watch my mouth a little bit more. Um, and I'm not saying obviously that I don't ever curse, I'm not a saint, <laughs> um, but I try not to. And I wanted to point out why. So first I'm going to go through my personal reasons why I don't, um, just like a broad thing. And then I want to mention how society perceives cursing and how my beliefs tie into that. Uh, and then how the Bible perceives cursing and how my beliefs tie into that. Or how my beliefs are supported, like how my beliefs on cursing are supported by both society, which is a secular environment, obviously, and uh, the Bible, which is what God says about it. So first why I don't personally choose to curse. Um, to me, it's not ladylike, and I want to be perceived as, as a lady. <laughs> I prefer uh, the delicacy of that, I guess you could say. Um, it's not a good example for children, and I do happen to be around kids uh, here and there, and so I don't want to get into the habit of it and then slip when they're around because I remember when I was a kid and the people that I look up to or looked up to uh, cursing and how it made me feel and it just it really hurt my gut and and my heart for some reason and so I don't want to make a small child feel that way I'm not saying that they would or that they look up to me but it's a possibility and I don't want to cause that feeling inside a, a tiny child so um there's they're not allowed on tv is another reason um like the big curse words, I guess. They're not allowed on TV, and that's our secular society acknowledging the, uh, you know, wrongness of those words. They don't even allow it on cable. So that tells me something about it, that our society doesn't do it, and, you know, our society's messed up in other ways. So <laughs> um, if they don't do it, why, why would I do it, basically, as a Christian? That was my point. Um, to me, it seems unprofessional, and I like to portray myself as a professional individual. Um, studies show that its results are countercultural. So what I mean by that is um, there was a study that I heard about, about people who were suffering from cancer, I believe it was breast cancer, and then I think it was cerebral palsy, if I remember correctly. I could be, I could be wrong or saying the wrong thing there, but um, I know one of them was breast cancer. And the study put a recorder on these individuals who were going through this horrible disease 
Um, and the ones who used more profanity actually, and this is screwed up, <laughs> but actually got less support from friends, family, um, and, you know, random acquaintances, I'm sure, uh, in terms of, like, their disease. So, <laughs> it's, it's almost countercultural because we use it a lot, but we don't like to see each other use those words. Like, we don't view people the same way. And that's so interesting to me, but that's one reason why I, why I don't use it, because look at how incredibly, um, just kind of turned around that is, and, but, but it's true, and it's unknowingly, or unconsciously for the listener, true that that happens. So, anyway, um, so it hurts me when other people curse, and by hurt me, I mean, like, it just, there's just like a little thing like in my in my chest. I'm like, ugh, that, like it makes me react physically when I hear somebody curse. So I don't want to do that to other people just in case they're the same way. Um, and really, it sucks, but it changes people's perception of you. It's just a fact of life. There's nothing we can do about it. But since that is true, I don't want people's perception of me to change. Um, I purposely portray myself in a certain way and I like it that way. I don't want to be seen as different than what I'm doing. And it's not necessarily I'm trying to put on a facade, but um, it's just part of the way that I approach life. So anyway, next, uh, society. So I'm gonna look at my notes a little bit more here because this is hard to remember, but I thought it was so cool. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So. Uh, society uses profanity a lot, obviously, but there's this dude called, uh, Steven Pinker, and he wrote a book on how, uh, our minds work with language. I can't remember the name of it. I'll try to remember it and put it down, uh, so I can hopefully read that later. But anyway, he says that swear words ping the emotional sensors of our brain. So it not only grabs the listener's attention, which obviously is true if somebody says, oh, I'm so effing happy, or oh, I'm so effing sad, or um, you piece of blank. It triggers an emotional response in the uh, listener. Not only that, but it triggers a physical response in the person who uses the language. So it gives the user relief. And that's not just his study. Multiple studies show that it uh, relieves some of the emotional or mental pain of, of whoever's using that word in the moment. So like if somebody stubs their toe and they're like, ah, F, then it does relieve some of the pain. And that's so weird, but it's so cool. Uh, so with that being said though, it's been overused so much, especially among, I imagine younger people, because I feel like people with People that are a little bit older with kids try to hold their tongue a little bit more. So younger people, I feel like it's it's overused. And so it just doesn't have the same effect. It's it's the same thing with dopamine, like with um, not like drugs and porn and things like that. Uh, it affects your dopamine centers or even even caffeine. Let's like take it down a notch. Caffeine. <laughs> it affects the emotional sensors of the brain, obviously, and your dopamine. So you need more of it the more that you use but you, there's no higher cuss word than the F word, for example. So it just, it loses that, that power and that emotional and physical response. Um, and that's just how it gets normalized, I guess. But anyway, um, also society trains young people at a young age, uh, to, to recognize how powerful these words are because they don't let them use them. So we don't let, kids use profanity and we try to hold our tongue around children and that just reiterates to them how powerful these words are and don't get like they are powerful obviously they trigger trigger a physical and remote emotional response um but anyway so the university of california in san diego the researchers proved that your body body physically responds to cursing so you get this, your eyes dilate, your heart beat or your heart rate increases and you start uh, perspiring. So you literally start sweating just a little bit whenever you curse. Um, 
like that's how powerful words are it just blows my mind um so there's there's sections of curse words that society has um i guess sectioned out so obviously some curse words are allowed on online and on cable like crap uh hell um dang it or something like that and then there's like the medium ones um i'm just gonna go ahead and say this damn is one of them uh i really can't think of a i really can't think of another middle one but then there's the bigger ones that are like the sh sugar honey iced tea um <clears throat> obviously the f word and then like some some combined ones like god and then the d word um and society not christians just society as a whole has placed certain words like that in the high uh off limits category i guess you could call it um so even though those words have um how neutral connotations like like um the f word could be described to have sex um the s word is a bodily function um and then you get into really bad territory here where um back in the day people would use the n word to describe certain people right so those were words that are used could be used neutrally because it just describes where it is or like a donkey is called an ass right but those words in our society today in the 21st century are built and are meant to offend to cause harm and to divide and that's according to that uc uc uh san diego study so even when they're used casually because they were created to do all those harmful things our body physically responds to them. It's so that's so intriguing to me, and I don't know why. Um, so that's society's view of curse words. Now, for me, I don't want to use those curse words because if our society, our secular society, says that they're a big deal and that they're used to cause harm, like, how could God think that that's okay? Like, our society that is screwed up recognizes how screwed up curse words are and I just can't justify using them if even bad people like because we are obviously inherently bad I am as well if even bad people recognize them as bad <laughs> you know what I mean like we don't we as a society don't necessarily recognize uh porn as bad all the time or or um premarital sex and obviously Christians recognize them as bad but even society recognizes curse words as being bad so big deal to me also, um, moving on to like the biblical perspective of it, and this is interesting to me as well because I haven't really dived into it before, but I, I did a couple weeks ago and then I had written it down. So I'm going to read <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 4 through 5, and this is when Paul is talking to the church of Ephesus. Um, so this is what he says. Let's see here. Um, where do we go? Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone... <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Three through four. Three through four. Um, no, it is just... It's just four. My bad. It's just four. I don't know why I wrote down four and five. Um, and then uh, Ephesians four twenty nine as well. So it says, let no corrupt corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. So, big deal, obviously. Um, so as Christians, we need to acknowledge how these words are perceived, because all in all, a word is just a word. Like, it's not it's not a physical object that can cause harm, like a knife or a gun. Um, it's just a word. So it matters more the heart behind the words. So as Christians, we need to, when we're deciding if we're going to curse or not, um, it's important to uh, recognize how they're perceived by other people. And we've ar I've already been over how society perceives them. So society perceives them as bad. Um, so that's one thing. <clears throat> they're meant to cause harm. We talked about that before. Jesus says in Matthew, Matthew 5, 22, if you're curious, um, 
he talks about verbal abuse there and obviously he's talking about how bad it is i'll i'll look that up later um so yes it's just a word but the heart behind the word is really what what makes the difference um okay james 1 26 oh i really i hope i can find this really quickly because i don't want to make this video longer than what it needs to be but i really want to read this one on the camera because i know my future self and i'm not gonna look it up down the line <clears throat> okay james 1 26 if anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart this person's religion is worthless so that really is convicting that really stings uh, personally i don't know about whoever uh else has read that thanks but personally that really hurts my heart um i don't i don't want any part of that so lastly i'm gonna leave with this and it's kind of going back into the secular frame of mind but according to dictionary.com which is so interesting to me that like the actual dictionary that everybody in the world uses names profanity as this exact definition get ready for this the secular dictionary dictionary.com describes profanity as abusive vulgar or irrelevant language let that sink in for a second abusive vulgar or irrelevant language now I don't know about you, but um, I don't think Jesus was any of those things. And I don't think he wanted his people to portray any of those things. So all in all, this is why I have made the decision um, for the past like year and a half to two years, why I try not to curse. Again, obviously I do it, everybody does especially like in their heads um but this is why and i think it's really important to note this train of thought and the reasons and research behind this so future zoe please take this into account and do with it as you will <laughs>